Hi everyone, it's Anthony back with another video and today we are going to be talking all about Super Goop. So I have been testing a bunch of Super Goop products all throughout the past um, couple few months. I guess this whole summer was kind of devoted in part to doing a brand review with Super Goop. I purchased a lot of their products um, and reviewed a good majority of what I picked up. There was a couple things that I ended up just skipping out on completely. And so I wanted to uh, mention those. Um, it's their, um, their mineral powder, their like setting powder, their tinted powder, um, their tinted BB cream, and then one of their eyeshadows. I picked those up because I was planning on going to a wedding in Hawaii and I was like, oh, it might be fun to like experiment with a makeup look or something that's pretty mild for like the day of the wedding, something really simple. Uh, the wedding um, is canceled, of course, you know, travel plans and all that stuff kind of got um, postponed and canceled. So I ended up just kind of bailing on those products in general. Um, who knows, I might come back to um, sample those at some point in the future, but right now I'm just trying to give them away because of expiration dates, those types of things. So skipped out on kind of a lot of their like more specific tinted almost makeup style products and just kind of have a focus on their sunscreens. There's a couple things in here that do have a tint though, um, but I've got it all laid out right here. We're going to be covering 17 different products. So hunker down. Um, I don't know how, how much time I'll spend on each one. I've broken them up between the ones that I did like and the ones that I did not like. So I wanted to touch on each one, talk a little bit about what, you know, made it a win for me or a fail. Um, so we'll try to get through it as quickly as possible, but uh, let's go ahead and get started with the ones that I reacted or responded to in a positive way. So Starting off with their Play line of products, we're gonna jump right in with kind of the main one, their, their first product, and this is the Super Goop Play. This is their everyday um, lotion with sunflower extract, SPF 50. I believe there's an SPF 30 version of this as well. And this, um, this, alongside a good portion of their sunscreen products, I'll mention when it's not the case, are going to be um, sunscreens that have chemical filters. So this is avobenzone, homosale, octosale, and octocrylene. You also have, um, like I said, the sunflower extract in here. And so this is intended to be used as a body and face sunscreen that you can pretty much use every single day, all over the body, all over the face, and be totally fine. Um, I really like the um, the consistency of this. It kind of has like a light lotion consistency that I found to be pretty layerable. I have a towel here so I can wipe off between, <laughs> um, between sampling, but um, yeah, it's just got this like nice lotion consistency and it uh, blends into the skin really, really well. It feels kind of slightly light, slightly hydrating. Um, and it has this kind of like herbal kind of spa um, scent to it. And that's due in part to some of the essential oils that are in here. And so as a body sunscreen, I was perfectly happy with this, happy applying it all over my arms, my legs, anytime I'm going out or even just around the house. However, it was a little too, um, even though it is nice and lightweight, for a body product, for the face, it was a little bit too heavy, left me feeling a little bit oily, and this product did tend to break me out a bit. So for the face, I would, personally, I skipped using it on my face after about the first couple weeks, and then I finished up the rest of my test with just using it as a body sunscreen and really didn't have any issues. So um, I've found some other body sunscreens from brands like Banana Boat and Hawaiian Tropic, just your really classic brands, to um, have some perfectly fine body sunscreens that offer excellent protection, um, have a little bit more of a clean, fresh scent, and um, don't really have any sort of like too much of a buildup as far as oiliness. And sometimes I can use them on my face without issues. So they're a little bit more versatile and they're more affordable. So even though I did like this product, Technically, you know, it is a win in that I would reuse it. I would continue using it on my body. I don't know if I'd spend the premium for a body only sunscreen. So it's kind of a half win, half lose, but um, it's, it's fine. It's a fine product for me. And then moving on to the Super Goop Play, this is their body mousse. 
um, SPF 50. This has blue sea kale in it. It's got a bunch of other uh, fruit extracts, uh, different type of antioxidant extracts, those types of things. Uses avobenzone, homosalate, and octosalate. We're missing the octocrylene in this formulation. And this one was much more approachable for me and one that I preferred over the everyday lotion. This mousse is just so much fun to use and it's nice and lightweight as well. In fact, it feels more lightweight than the, the lotion. And it like, I'll, sh I'll do a little sample. This is a brand new bottle. I bought a backup already, <laughs> but it comes out in this really cool foam and um, it's a little bit, can be a little bit messy, you know, if you really go to like apply it, sometimes it'll bounce off the skin, but a little bit you can see goes a long way. I applied quite a bit there, but it does absorb really, really nicely. It feels really, really comfortable on the skin. And because the formulation just seemed a little bit more approachable to me, I was able to use this on my face without any issue. Has this interesting, almost kind of bubblegum kind of candy scent to it. And um, it, it goes on a little bit with a little bit of a sheen, but that absorbs down and it just feels really comfortable. So it's a nice one because I feel like the whole family could use it. You know, if kids are a little bit reluctant to sit there and put sunscreen on or let you put sunscreen on, having it in that fun mousse form kind of makes it a little bit more of like a fun experience and just an interesting application. And it has almost kind of a candy scent to it as well. But I wore this um, during um, some like exercise, hiking, that type of thing, and didn't have any issues with it stinging my eyes or anything like that. It was just a nice, fun SPF that I would absolutely come back to. And in fact, this is my uh, backup bottle. So there's that. And then the rest from the Play line of products that I did get along with, um, I have, there are two lip balms. One is with acai and one is with mint. These are just a straightforward, easy to use kind of jelly style lip balm, one with a mint flavor, one with a berry flavor. Both of them have SPF 30 and use chemical sunscreen filters. And they have this really nice kind of um, balm, almost gloss kind of consistency. Um, so it's going to be really hard to see on camera, but um, I'll, play, I'll just do a little bit more and I can even show you. Like it's got that balm kind of squeeze out consistency and it's nice. It provides a nice, decent amount of um, hydration and moisture and some nourishment to the skin. It's got, um, let's see, you've got shea butter in here, uh, rice bran extract, sunflower extract, and then um, this particular flavor, the mint has spearmint and peppermint oils in it. So it has that kind of minty scent. And I found that it it was easy to reapply throughout the day. I didn't ever feel like it was getting too tacky or like gloss like. So it doesn't it doesn't turn into like a really thin gloss. that's like kind of gloopy. It holds its um, holds itself to the lips really, really well without feeling too tacky or sticky, which I liked. And um, even though the mint doesn't mask the chemical kind of sunscreeny taste, you know, if you do get some in your mouth, you taste it. Um, this, the mint version doesn't quite mask that chemical taste of the SPF as much as the acai does. That kind of berry scent just did a better job of masking that and it just felt a little bit, or it, I guess it tasted better. It's so weird to say, but I guess it did. Um, so I just felt a little bit more comfortable with the acai just for that. But other than that, they were perfectly fine kept my lips hydrated, moisturized, prevented them from getting cracked or chapped due to excessive sun exposure, those types of things. So I think you'd be fine with either one. I just prefer the, the flavor of the berry. So, um, and then when we're talking about the SPFs uh, for lips, their other product they have is their um, Lip Shield Play. It's their Play Lip Shield with Shea Butter SPF 30 just a little balm. And this is a twist up balm. And this also features shea butter. I think it has, it might have jojoba oil in it. These are all chemical filters, um, coconut oil, soybean oil, sunflower seed oil, those type avocado oil in here as well. And, um, this one doesn't really have a scent to it whatsoever. It maybe has like a little bit of almost like a rosemary 
scent to it. It's a little bit herbal, but no real powerful scent to it. And this is a much more classic, just kind of chapstick style um, stick uh, lip balm. So not, it's not going to provide the sheen or the shine or the like semi glossiness of the other two that we talked about. This is more classic, straightforward, did its job. It's actually um, a little bit lighter in feel compared to as far as the nourishment and stuff, even though there's more oils in here, this feels a little bit lighter, I think because a lighter layer can be applied than the, the other products, the, um, these kind of more glossy lip balms. Um, but I find that it's a little bit more nourishing and a little bit more long lasting in terms of hydration compared to other lip products from other brands I've used for SPF, including the Sun Bum. If you've used the Sun Bum sticks, you know that they, you know that they have almost like a very thin, lightweight, nearly oily feel to them. Um, this is a little bit more dense, a little bit more rich. So if you've used the Sun Bum sticks before and you wish that they had just a little bit more in terms of um, weight and nourishment and, and holding hydration to the skin or to the lips for a longer period throughout the day, you might prefer this one instead. So there's those. Um, some other wins were the Super Goop. This is their 100% mineral sunscreen stick, SPF 50. This is a mineral sunscreen stick that's a twist up top, just like that. And you can use this on your entire face. You can use this on the body, I suppose, although you'd probably burn through this really quickly. I use this specifically for my eye area. Um, I do experience some stinging and burning occasionally from using chemical sunscreens. So I like to use a mineral sunscreen stick around my eyes, kind of tap and pat it in just to blend it out, get rid of some of that white cast. And then I'll go over with my chemical sunscreen around my eyes. So I'm still getting protection everywhere, but the mineral sunscreen, that sunscreen, so zinc oxide, titanium oxide, they tend not to burn my eyes or give any irritation. So I'll just use those to kind of create a barrier from the rest Rest of the sunscreen that I'm using elsewhere. And I use this just around my eyes because it does give a slight white cast that does need to be blended out. So I'm not necessarily relying on this solely for SPF. I have sunglasses on usually when I'm going out, but it's more of just like protecting my eye area from the rest of the sunscreen that I use. Um, I couldn't use this on my whole face because of that white cast or kind of that um, ashiness that it gives skin. However, this is a really nicely kind of buttery um, stick. Some of the sunscreen sticks that I've used that are mineral almost feel a little bit dry and chalky. This has some oils in it that make it feel a little bit more emollient and rich, which is really nice, especially around the eye area. And you can see that that white cast isn't that intense and I can I can pat it out. Obviously, that's not enough for proper coverage, but like I said, this is more of just keeping my eyes from being irritated more than anything else, but it blends out really nicely. Doesn't leave too much of a white cast at all. Darker skin tones than me might find it to be more apparent, but on my skin tone, it's, it's fairly workable. Here's it side by side. And I just really like it. It also felt kind of nourishing, hydrating to my eye area, which is nice. You've got um, olive fruit extract in here, um, some other oils in here as well. Um, chia seed oil, olive oil um, in here. And then um, there's got, there's like a vanilla plant extract, which gives it this really interesting vanilla crossed with like a tea scent. It reminds me of like, um, almost like, a jasmine bubble tea is kind of what it smells like or a green bubble tea or like a milk tea. Just has this wonderful scent that I really, really like. So anytime I use a chemical sunscreen and it, I'm noticing that it's stinging or burn, burning my eyes by the end of the day, then I'll go ahead and incorporate this sunscreen stick just to create that barrier and provide some nourishment and hydration to my eye area. So this one was a surprise win because I always I don't always do so well with mineral sunscreen products. And then we've got the uh, Super Goop. This is their Unseen sunscreen and this is SPF 40. This is their kind of silicone based, completely clear 
chemical sunscreen. So avabenzone, homocellate, octocellate, octocrylene, typical suspects that you're gonna find in a lot of the super goop chemical sunscreen products. I used this a couple of years ago and did a review on it. And my review was kind of meh because at the time I wasn't a fan of like slippery and slidey silicone products like that primer feel. I just didn't like that sensation on my face. And at the time I associated that with like potential pore clogging, which really isn't the case. Um, but I just, you know, now that I've kind of educated myself a little bit more on how silicones are used in skincare and the fact that I've just kind of over time gotten used to different finishes and feels. And I honestly don't mind that kind of like slidey primary kind of feel. And so I just appreciate this being someone with a darker skin tone in that it is just a completely clear semi-translucent sunscreen product that just melts into skin. Like there's, there's zero chance of a white cast, zero chance of ashiness. There's just nothing. It just goes right into skin. And so I really appreciate having this option now that I understand how hard it is to find even some chemical sunscreens they will start to kind of gather around my eyelids or they'll gather around my necklines um, or like kind of the creases in my neck. They'll gather on my forehead um, or if I'm doing light exercise, it'll just kind of turn white and start melting down my face. So I really appreciate something that gives a nice satin semi-matte finish just goes on beautifully, feels very soft and comfortable. I'm, I, I'm starting to like that feeling. I, I guess I like it on my body more than I like it on my face, but I don't mind it. And those that are interested in, or those that are using sunscreen, or not sunscreen, makeup over their sunscreen, I could see them totally using this as a primer step because it has a lot of the same properties of a makeup primer, that, that kind of heavy silicone base that kind of fills and pours, smooths, blurs, and then you can kind of go over that with your makeup. So I know this is a super popular product. I, you, I initially wasn't a fan of it, but now I get it and I like it. So um, that one's a win. And then the last two products, I'll just talk to, about them together. They're both from the Glow line. So this is their Glow Oil, SPF 50, and then their Glow Stick, also SPF 50. So obviously this is a liquid style oil that um, you just mist on. It's a pump spray. So you just pump that right on, smooth it on, and it's gonna give you some SPF protection. Um, no synthetic fragrance in this one. Um, I believe they even removed the essential oils in this. Yeah, the previous version, because I used both, the previous version had some essential oils in it. This one has metafoam seed oil, coconut oil, um, those types of just like more, uh, there's some shea butter in here. So it's more about the hydration and the nourishment emollient properties. Um, and this one doesn't have the scent where the other one kind of smelled like rosemary E. And I'll try, this is such a mess to spray, but I'm gonna go for it. Um, so it's a pump spray. Oh, okay. Um, so you can see you got that glossiness from it. It massages in like a body oil would. It gives a lot of sheen. It doesn't feel incredibly heavy, especially if you're pretty light-handed with it and don't go crazy. It's gonna give you that reflection. So if you're out in the sun or out at the beach and you kind of want that glowy kind of sheen, if you're going for that look, this really provides that. It doesn't have a real scent to it. It just smells kind of like just a basic sunscreen and absorbs okay, but you will have some of it sitting on the skin for that cosmetic effect. So I wouldn't rely on this. Like I said, I used a good portion of the one that had essential oils, realized they had reformulated it, and I was like, well, it's not fair to review that one because that's not what it is anymore, and then I picked up this one. Uh, so I wouldn't use it as an all over body everywhere sunscreen. It's just too oily and too heavy to be giving yourself a whole body nice coat in that oil, you will probably feel very uncomfortable, especially if you're applying it several times throughout the day. But if you're just looking for like a little bit of enhanced illumination, maybe on the chest area, or maybe on the neck, maybe on the arms or shoulders, you wanna just give some highlight and some glow, you know, if you're wearing a swimsuit or what have you, then this is a nice addition because you're gonna get that glow that you would from like a body oil, but this is actually providing SPF 50 protection 
protection in addition to the sunscreen that you put on before. So it's just giving you even more. Um, so I'm a fan of this. I feel like if you're gonna do it, you might as well add some SPF to the mix as well um, to kind of complement what you're using already. So that one's a win. And then the stick, I have pretty much the exact same thing to say about, except I used this on my face. So um, one thing I wanna get out of the way is people do have a hard time with this because it's like a, a push pop style. So you kind of have to push it up from the bottom, but you need to be ever so gentle and slight with it as like you, you apply a bit of pressure, but you just want to back off of it as soon as you start seeing it go up. Because if you put, if you just go, nah, the whole thing will shoot up and then it's kind of a done deal. And I've seen a lot of complaints about that. So you just have to be very gentle with this. And I, it has, you know, a lot the same chemical filters, all that stuff, some of the similar oils as the glow oil. It's just in a stick form. So this is like a solid, almost like a deodorant stick. And so I use this on my face. I will just use this on kind of the, um, the cheek area just to add some additional glow if I'm kind of going out and walking around for the day. Um, just to have, you know, just that enhanced little shine. I don't need it. It's just a fun little addition to my routine. I've done it on um, just kind of a swipe on my arm just to add a little bit of glow there. So wherever you feel like you want to add a little bit of highlight or glow um, to your to your sunscreen kind of wardrobe or routine, I think this is a nice option. A little bit goes a really long way. I highly doubt that I'll be able to use either of these within the year or whatever it is after opening that you're allowed to kind of use sunscreens or use them by their expiration dates. It, I just, you like, that's all I use. And that was but nothing, nothing compared to the entire stick. I'd have to be like really going at it to use this in, in a, fast manner. So I think it's a good investment in the sense that you'll get a lot of wear out of them, a lot of use out of them, but it was just fun. Once again, I don't foresee someone sitting here coating their entire face and entire body with this sunscreen stick. It would be uncomfortable. You'd waste through the product so quickly. This is more of like kind of an accessory to an, an actual top to bottom sunscreen. So you might come in with the everyday lotion, or you might come in with the, whoops, with the body mousse, give yourself your nice, you know, coat of protection with this sunscreen, and then just touch up with the highlight or um, touch up with the stick or the oil just to provide a little bit extra. Almost like a cosmetic highlighter, cosmetic oil, but with SPF built inside. So those were all of the products that I liked. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, what? Yes, nine products I was happy with. The lip balms, you know, two flavors, so maybe eight that I was happy with. The other ones are the ones that I was not so happy with. So I'll start with, I guess, the, the least offenders moving on to the most offenders. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to organize these. Um, by by how they worked. We'll just grab them. I kind of know it. So starting off with the the least of the problematic products was the Super Goop Body Butter SPF 40. So this is a thick, heavy, balmy kind of body butter that um, provides a lot of hydration and nourishment to the skin. Um, has the same chemical ingredients, uh, chemical sunscreens, avabenzone, octosalate, octocrylene. Um, you've got sunflower extract in here, rosemary leaf extract, a whole host of essential oils, um, but it has this thick kind of buttery consistency. So you really kind of have to squeeze that out. And then there's that. And it just applies a little bit more thickly than your the everyday lotion does. Still absorbs fairly nicely with the first application. You're not getting any white cast or anything like that. Has this very interest, interesting scent. I don't know what that scent is. You can smell the essential oils, but there's something else there that I just don't find very appealing. It's kind of like a bready, yeasty kind of smell mixed with plastic. Just not great. Um, but I just found this, even though it doesn't have a ton of like shea butter and jojoba oil or anything like that, which some of the others do and feel nice on the skin. This just felt too tacky 
once it once it dried down and especially when you try to do multiple applications throughout the day it just felt a little bit heavy it really tended to gather right here in my arm like kind of that arm crease like it felt really sticky there every time i'd like reach my arm out i'd feel a little like and so I just didn't like it. It felt heavy on my skin. It almost started to feel a little waxy by the end of the day. It just was uncomfortable. I absolutely did not put this on my face, obviously. It's just too heavy for that. Um, but yeah, I didn't like it. And it might be because I have, I tend to have more oily uh, skin or just kind of like, I, I just don't reach for body lotion super often because I don't get like dry patches or anything, sometimes in the winter, which might be where I put this back into my routine if I don't give it away, is my, my skin does tend to get a little bit more dry in the winter month, so that might be better, but as it stands for a summertime product, it was just too heavy, uncomfortable on my legs, it would, like, behind my knees it would feel gross, and I guess if you have super dry skin or cracked skin, this might be an um, upgraded option compared to the everyday lotion. You might want to go for the body butter if you have that super dry skin that just soaks everything up. Because you might see some more benefit out of this and you'll get the SPF 40. So even though it didn't work for me, I think it could work for others. And it, because it's a sunscreen, it's a nice choice compared to like a typical body lotion or body butter. You kind of get the best of both worlds. This just didn't feel right to me, didn't smell right to me. So um, I might hold on to it for the winter time and give it another try. Otherwise, the rest of my bottle I'm about down to here. Um, it's gonna be going to a friend that might have some more dry skin. So that was kind of a fail for me. And then, oh geez, these were all bad. Uh, let's let's go. Sorry, let's go with uh, the. I think this is one of the latest products from Supergoop. This is their Glow Screen SPF 40. So this is supposed to kind of be like the unseen sunscreen, but with a little bit of a highlight, a little bit of a tint. Um, it also uses avobenzone, octosalate, and octocrylene. You have, um, I think there's mica in here. Um, you've also got um, sunflower seed oil as well. Um, some other hydrators, and then there's the, there's niacinamide in here, titanium dioxide. Um, so this has a tint, and I only used this a couple times before I bailed on it because this, I don't know if it's because of my skin tone or what it is, but it gives my skin... Sorry about that, there's some lighting issues. It suddenly got, I don't know what I did, but suddenly the, the viewfinder got kind of dark, but we're just gonna keep rolling with it. Hopefully it didn't actually get darker, and if it did, my apologies. Um, but back to the glow screen. So I don't know if it's my skin tone or the fact that maybe this is supposed to be used just as kind of like a highlighting product similar to the glow oils and the glow stick uh, because this just leaves my skin um, I, I took a couple pictures of it but it leaves my skin with this like whoops, leaves my skin with this kind of robot c3po kind of sheen to it especially on my face so this was quite a bit to just put on the the back of my hand but you can see it does take a little bit to massage in especially to my skin tone and once you do kind of get it pat, patted in, it just leaves this really awkward, especially in natural sunlight, this awkward kind of metallic looking sheen to my skin. And on the face, it just looks really strange. And so I guess maybe I could see myself putting it here or here, um, just like I did with the glow stick, but I just was kind of turned off by the product in general. I didn't like the finish. Um, I preferred the feel of the Unseen sunscreen, um, kind of leaning into that kind of primer feel. But uh, also I could see this, you know, because it leaves that odd uh, sheen behind, it does really, it's very even. That, that weird tint is very even. So I could see someone really enjoying putting makeup on top of that because it does kind of blur in the same way that the Unseen sunscreen does, but you have this like metallic -y kind of bronzed tint everywhere. So I could see someone liking that as a base for makeup, but just as is walking out the door, it wasn't ideal. So that was a fail. And then we've got, all right. Um, 
the zinc screen, I'll talk about these together. This is the zinc screen 100% mineral lotion, and then this is the bright eyed 100% mineral eye cream. So both of these products are in a pump style format and they both use zinc oxide as their um, sunscreen filter. So these are physical um, inorganic sunscreens. Both of them have SPF 40, boop -ba doo and they both have that kind of pump style applicator. To be honest, they seem like pretty similar products, um, even though the eye cream is much more expensive per ounce. Um, the eye cream, I think it has some, it might have some peptides thrown in here. It's got radish root ferment filtrate, green tea leaf extract, uh, titanium dioxide, maybe it doesn't, um, lactobacillus ferment. So it's supposed to help to brighten, um, reduce dark spots, and it has almost kind of a concealer type effect because of the zinc oxide. The zinc oxide sunscreen shares um, the same, like I said, the zinc oxide obviously has coconut fruit extracts, iron oxides, blueberry fruit extract, um, and let's see if there's anything else in here worth calling out. Mm, not so much. Uh, so it's pretty, they're both pretty straightforward products. They both honestly look kind of the same too. So let's go ahead and apply the zinc sunscreen. So there's that. And then let's go ahead and apply the bright eyed. This is the eye cream. There's that. The eye cream actually is a little bit more thick, a little bit more heavy and kind of chunky. And that might be because a little dry patch got clogged in the in the applicator, but it does feel more heavy. But they feel very similar. They're just kind of a tinted sunscreen, um, which is why they're, I'm not a fan of them. They left me with a very rather intense white cast that doesn't really uh, pat down. And neither of them, especially the eye cream, seem to absorb really well. They just like really like to sit on the surface of the skin and I found the eye cream to really pill around my eyes. Even when I was just trying to pat it in right away, it would immediately start to pill and ball. The zinc screen the, the, for the face, the, the zinc screen, the bigger one, this one just really liked to gather around the creases in my eyelids, around my neck, and gather along my hairline. So it was just very apparent that I was wearing um, a mineral sunscreen. They left me, both left me with a white cast and were just uncomfortable to use. And so I didn't really use them, use the eye cream at least long enough to see any benefits from the niacinamide or fermented ingredients to see any brightening because it was just gross to have around my eyes and just kind of clumpy and tacky. So I didn't use it that long before I realized that it wasn't for me and I ended up moving away from it. The zinc screen, I even used this in the house because I was like, who cares if I look like a white cast creasy mess in the house. So I did try to use this as much as possible before putting together a review, uh, but I will be giving the rest of it away to maybe someone that has more fair skin or just it sits on their skin a little bit more nicely. Um, and then these two also for the face, this is the City Sunscreen Serum. And this is the Super Screen Daily Moisturizer. So both of these are chemical sunscreens using avabenzone, homosalate, octosalate. The serum uses octocrylene as well. Um, some of the featured ingredients here are, um, you've got lactic acid in one of them. There's some silicones in here as well. I believe one has like lilac extract or something like that. I'll have to double check, uh, let's see. Sunflower seed cake extract, I'm sorry. Um, so they're both pretty basic hydrators. Like you're not gonna find a bunch of green tea extract or aloe leaf. It's all kind of, um, I don't wanna say chemical based because everything's a chemical, but kind of lab based hydrators, emollients, those types of things, which is actually not a bad thing. There's some more consistency to be had with those rather than just throwing in a bunch of shea butter and calling it a day. Um, however, I don't know what in these products caused a reaction, but both of them broke my skin out on my face pretty immediately and significantly. So I don't know what it was, but they just did not work for my skin type. And so here's the serum. I actually really liked the consistency of the serum. It's very, it's like a very nice lightweight lotion. It applies super well. 
doesn't really have any scent to it. It just feels like a light emulsion and it just blends right into skin. And so this was just so comfortable and I was like, yes, finally, like it's kind of what I wanted from the everyday lotion on my face. And so I was super excited to use this. It leaves a nice finish to it, but I'd say after about day three or day four, I started to notice some pretty intense blemishes on my forehead, as well as on my temples. My temples have always been really acne and breakout prone, but this area is almost kind of like a barometer for the rest of my face. Uh, my cheeks will always have something because I shave, and so the shaving cot sometimes causes irritation, ingrown hairs. I'm more acne prone like from here down now, but my forehead stays relatively happy as long as um, I'm not using anything that, any product that's causing a reaction. So if I use a product that's irritating to my skin or is going to break me out, the first place I see it is my forehead. My forehead's like, hey, we've ha we have an issue. And so the serum just kind of set everything off. And so I stopped using it, got my skin to calm down put it back on my skin just to see if the same reaction would happen and it did. And that's kind of my test is I'll usually do two, um, two phases. So I'll kind of phase it out of my routine if I see a breakout, let that subside and then work it back in. And if I see it happen twice without changing anything else in my routine, then I know where the culprit lies. So this was just a no-go for me. However, my skin's different than everybody else's skin. So, um, if you patch test it or use it and your skin seems to agree with it, I like this one, like I said, because it's the most lightweight and approachable out of all of the products that I tested. Keep in mind, however, it's only uh, SPF 30 PA3 pluses. And then we have the Super Screen. This is kind of basically the heavy version of, um, of the serum. It's just a more thick, kind of bouncy, uh, cream as opposed to the serum, which is a little bit more wet, lightweight and like an emulsion. So you can just grab a hunk out of there. I would typically use a scoop, but the rest of this is going on my body. Um, and it goes on nicely as well. Seems to, both of these seem to provide a decent amount of hydration. I had no problems with the hydrating and nourishing factor considering what they've got in them. They both feel really nice and I absolutely could see myself using this as an everyday um, lotion on days where my skin felt a little bit more dry or just needed a little bit more love. Um, it feels nice. I kept this in the fridge for a little while and putting this on after um, a workout or after being out, like let's say I was gonna go for a few hour hike come back and, you know, get uh, cleaned up, kind of wash off, reset from the sweat and everything, and then go back out for like a dinner or go just for a walk. I loved putting this on after it's been in the fridge because it was so cooling and soothing and it has a little bit more of a richness, a little bit of more of an emollient. It has just a bit more sheen than the serum. It ha Even though there's no synthetic fragrance, there there's obviously a fragrant ingredient in here. I just don't know the lingo. And that's why I think I said it had lilac extract or something because it smells very floral, like kind of potpourri floral. And our fresh cut flowers, I mean, not fresh cut flowers, like dried potpourri flowers. And I'm not a big fan of it, of the scent. I don't know where it comes from in the ingredients list. I couldn't pinpoint it. But regardless, this broke me out just as much as the serum did. So I once again used it for a few days and I was like, liking it because it had the cooling effect from the fridge and it just has that nice weight to it, a little bit of an oil feel to it um, that I think those with dry skin would really like. But after a few days, I started to see those telltale breakouts on my forehead, cycled it in and out, same thing happened, so I had to bail on it. I will absolutely be keeping these for myself to use on my body, even though this is these are both expensive body sunscreens. I really like the feel of both of them and I absolutely wouldn't mind coating myself in these just to use them up. So I'll be holding on to those. And then last two and the worst two, um, we'll start with the second to last. This is the SPF 50 Supergoop Play Antioxidant Body Mist with vitamin C. So I actually, 
invested in two of these straight out of the bat because I was like, oh, it's a spray, it's SPF 50. I mean, how bad could it be, you know? And um, it's bad, that's the answer. Um, this has avabenzone, homocele, octocele, octocrylene, um, but your actual inactive ingredients lists, alcohol is the next highest ingredient after your um, actives. Um, you've also got green tea leaf extract, which is good. Um, lime oil, grapefruit peel oil, lemon oil, mandarin peel oil, tangerine leaf oil. Um, then we have some citrus oil, then spearmint oil, and then grapeseed oil. Uh, run, you know, finishing off, there's peppermint oil in here. Just a ton, it's basically alcohol, fragrant oils, and your sunscreens. And that's pretty much it. And it feels like that, unfortunately. So I'll spray a little bit, I'm gonna wash this table when I'm done. I'll spray a little bit on, but this just feels so oily and like, like a dry oil. It smells really intensely of essential oils, but it still doesn't mask the alcohol. And it just feels like, uh, it's just gross. Like, I don't, I ch I've been trying at testing out a new sunscreen spray because this kind of turned me off to sunscreen sprays. I was like thinking, is this how they all are? Because I guess I haven't really used that many. I use mainly lotions. So I was like, is this how all sunscreen sprays are? Because this is just nasty. And then I uh, started testing one from the brand Hint. They have a SPF 30 pineapple spray, which I'll be reviewing soon. But that one skips out on the alcohol, I believe. It's got some oils in it, but they're much lower on the list and there's far fewer of them. And it feels a little oily upon application, but it just absorbs so nicely and feels like a normal sunscreen lotion after that. This, that feeling, that, that feeling that makes you just kind of walk, want to walk around like this when you spray it on your arms, it doesn't go away. And then you try to put more on throughout the day and it's just like, like everything I touched, my steering wheel, where I put my hand down on my door, where I put my hands down on my computer, um, on my computer desk, everything just had just a, like just a streak of oil. One time I tried applying this, I was like, um, I was in a rush and usually I'd go outside to apply it. I was like, I'm just gonna do it in the bathroom real quick. So I sprayed down in the bathroom with the fan on because this creates kind of a lot of stuff in the air and then left left for the day, came back and had my shoes on and stepped in the bathroom and I like kind of slid because there's just like so much oil. Even at the end of the day, it was just sitting there and I'm like, what is this doing to my skin? It just felt, it's just gross. I don't, I don't know. I hate to be that person that's, that says this is just a bad product. I always like to be, say something along the lines of, it's not for me, but someone that wants to put makeup over it might like it, or somebody with really dry skin might like it, or somebody with a skin tone that's different than mine might really like this. This, I just don't see in any reason why someone would pick this over a different sun, a sunscreen spray that performs a lot better and just doesn't feel as nasty. Um, it's just not, it's just not for me. It's, it's bad. Okay, <laughs> I don't think it's for anyone. Um, and then the last one, the worst product out of all 17 that I tried is the Super Goop Play 100% Mineral Body Mist um, SPF 30. So this uses zinc oxide 12%. And this is what sold me. Rather than having the alcohol, you have aloe leaf juice as your first ingredient, uh, calendula flower extract in here, safflower seed oil, some fatty alcohols, ca uh, chamomile flower extract, cocoa glucosides, um, sunflower seed oil in here as well. Um, so it just, I was like, this is like the kinder version of this, which was just like very intense and and gross. So I was happy that I saw this ingredients list. It looked much more skincare focused, those types of things. It just seemed nicer for my skin. So I decided to give it a shot. I only got one though, because the one thing that did have me concerned was the fact that it is mineral. I usually don't have good luck with mineral mists or mineral sunscreens in general. And my suspicions were confirmed. This gives me the most awful white cast I've ever experienced from any skincare product. Um, oh, this is gonna be tough. I did, I posted this on social media to show. Um, I don't wanna spray it because it's gonna get in my face. We're gonna, let's do it this way. I'm gonna have to clean this whole house. Okay, so maybe I can do that. 
Does that work? Okay, so let's go ahead and apply it so you can see. It's just, it's just white paint. It's just white paint for my body. If you can see what I just did, the table is now coated in it. Uh, my leg is now coated in it, but it just turns into a total white spray paint. And um, a skincare guru that I absolutely love, Gothamista, mentioned this on one of her favorites for, um, for mineral sunscreen products. And I just was kind of like, what? And so I, I made a comment and she said, oh, you really gotta, you gotta massage it in almost immediately and then it'll, then it'll go in, and then it'll give you no white cast. And I'm like, honey, honey, <laughs> like, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? It's just awful. It's so, it immediately kind of turns into a powder. It immediately just kind of sets into, into every crevice. Like I can't, I didn't really get enough on my fingers, but it'll even settle into the creases of my fingers and just give me lines everywhere. It's already kind of settling right into the crease of my arm, but there's no amount of rubbing. There's no amount of prayer that's gonna get this thing to work. I'm so, so sorry to say. And it's just, it has this like almost kind of like makes your skin have this like odd kind of clay feel and it just is very uncomfortable. It just grips onto all of your hairs too. If you've got, I barely have arm hair, but it's like gripping onto all of those. And I guess if you're, if you're having to make a compromise and say, I have to use a mineral sunscreen and I'm willing to, to suffer through whatever white cast or odd feeling that may bring, then yeah, I mean, it is an option but it's not a very good one. Um, it's just a mess, it's gross. So yeah, the first time I put this on, I was like, no, this is a joke. Like, this is super good playing a joke on everyone with darker skin tones. But apparently they're serious, it, and it smells like kind of like Play-Doh as well. So yeah, you can see, I mean, it's very obvious that this is just not practical to go outside with, let alone on your face. So that was probably the most bummer of all the products um because i just wouldn't wish that on anybody <laughs> i guess with these two i just wouldn't wish on anybody everything else i either liked or it wasn't for me but i could see it working for somebody else so that's that that is my entire review on supergoop it was pretty much an even split nine products wait one two three four five six seven nine products i liked eight products i didn't for a total of 17 and like I said, if I do have the opportunity to try some of their more like tinted powders or their eyeshadows, which I don't wear makeup, um, I'll definitely update this review. But I hope that you found this to be pretty comprehensive. Um, my face is oil combination dehydrated. If you're wondering what my skin type is, I'm not really reactive to anything um, in particular. Like I, there's not a certain ingredient or set of ingredients that I steer away from other than marula oil. That seems to be the only thing that I can't get along with. Sorry about that camera overheated. But basically the moral of the story was, um, you know, I was just talking about my skin type just so you had a better idea for if you decide to use these. So oily combination, dehydrated skin. Um, I sweat fairly easily when I do activity. So I was taking that into account when using those pro the Supergoop products as well. Um, and then on my body, I'm just generally kind of like normal, maybe a little bit oily skin. I just, I rarely get dry, let's just say that. So I hope you found this worthwhile sitting through. It's definitely a long, extensive review, but I wanted to cover as many products in one go from that single brand Super Goop as I could. Um, it's been a fun and interesting experience this summer using the Super Goop products, and I definitely found some winners that I'll be coming back to and some that I will be staying far, far away from. So let me know if you have any questions, need any additional information, or make sure to comment and leave leave um, you know, recommendations on other sunscreen products, or if you want me to try the Super Goop ones in a different way and maybe they'll work better for me. Um, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and wash that off <laughs> um, so I'm not so, um, I'm not so tuxedo cookie looking or whatever those are called. And um, yeah, thank you again so much for watching. I have so much fun doing these videos. I hope you enjoy um, watching them. And as always, stay glowing. Bye-bye.